Hello everyone, welcome back to Tishney's GT Sport Driving School. This is episode 16 and this is all about mental preparation. So what can you do to help you prepare mentally uh, to get you in the best possible shape in your mind for a race in Gran Turismo Sports? Or any other racing game, or anything in life for example, it might even just be racing. So, similar to the psychology video, in the sense that similar topics are going to be discussed. However, we're talking about literal actions here, which can really help improve uh, your state of mind going into a race. So, straight off the bat, I'm going to give you an example. I've got a list here of things I want to discuss. Uh, so, what is an example? So, going back, way, way back in my esports career, I suppose, career, um, I used to play StarCraft 2 and I tried to, you know, get as best as I could there, try and get into the pro level. I didn't quite make it, but, you know, I tried my hardest. Now, there was one thing I did before every single match, and that was listen to one particular song which uplifted me and gave me a little bit more confidence in myself, irrespective of who I was playing. It doesn't matter if they were, like, the best player in the world or the worst player in the world. It, this song just uplifted me. I used to listen to it every time before a match, and that effect on me helped me perform better, or at least I, I, I felt like it. Now, you could do this before a race. Think of Formula 1 drivers. They listen to music before a race. They've got the headphones in. Uh, you see that on the grid walks, etc. Uh, so why did they do that? Well, obviously, as I said, it could uplift them. It could give them that extra positive energy they need to perform well uh, in the race. It could be that it just gives them a bit more confidence. Or it could be that it removes a lot of distractions, which I, I haven't really talked about. You know, So some people, uh, I know Adam's like this uh, from the UK, um, Adam hates distractions. He wants to focus on the race and that is it. So um, if you are like that, you might want to make sure animals can't walk in your room. Or, you know, other people in your house can't walk in your room um, to then distract you from the race that you're doing. You want silence and you want to focus. It could be the case. So doing stuff like this can help you mentally prepare better because then you're confident that an animal isn't going to walk in. So you're not worried about it, you know, the dog getting stuck in your room. Or you're not worried about someone but walking in and start talking to you while you're in a top 16 superstar race. It helps you prepare better because then you don't have that worry taken off your mind as well. So then now you can think more about the race, more about how you do it. Mental preparation there. And it's not even just music either. So I, I used music there because F1 drivers did it. And I, and I did it for a different, completely different game. Um, but it's not just music. So... Drinking your favourite drink. As you know, I'm British and I like a cup of tea. It's just a fact, okay? We are going to look at the cup of tea. Standard for all Brits, of course. We need a good cup of tea. So, um, drink it. I always have a cup of tea before I start streaming and racing. Does it help me? I don't know, but it makes me want to go to the toilet a bit more. And I do like to have a cup of tea. I think it does help me. It could be a placebo effect. I don't know. Now, when I go to these World Tour events, um, and I have sort of noticed it, that if I don't have a cup of tea before, like on the morning or whatever, uh, I do feel like I perform slightly worse than when I do have one. So in Sydney, I had a few cups of tea in the morning and I was absolutely fine. But then I went to other places and I didn't feel like I was performing as well as I could or should have. Uh, is that a placebo effect? Probably, but you know, it's there. So how to prepare myself better? Drink a cup of tea, make sure I have a cup of tea beforehand. It's not even if you want to drink something. It could be eating something, like a chocolate bar or you know, a particular fav favourite food or whatever it might be. For example, uh, I used to eat, uh, well, I'm on a diet at the moment, but peanut butter sandwich right before bed. Helps you get to sleep better. Um, is that a placebo effect? There's some science behind it, don't get me wrong, but potentially it is. But it made me, fe uh, make me feel, f it did make me feel a lot better. I'll get my words out eventually. Uh, so I could go to sleep and actually be refreshed for a race the next day. So, you know, it's just a little something that you can do to make yourself feel better. Another one that I do, which is a big placebo effect, I know you guys have mentioned this already, I do the daily mileage before I enter an FIA race. I think it does affect my performance. I think it does affect the car's performance. Other people think it's just tidges the, you know, fake news or whatever you want to call it. You're fake news. Uh, but, um, you know, I do it and I feel it helps me perform better. So I do it and I don't have that worry anymore because I know I've already done the daily mileage. That worry comes out of my head, straight over there. I've mentally prepared that little bit better for the race. Another worry gone out of my sight. As I say, these are all little things that you could do that might help. Most of them will be placebo effects, but you know, F1 drivers are listening to music before a race. There's a reason for that. They are, they are paying people thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds 
in psychology and health and et cetera like that, the teams are doing the same to make sure that each driver and each member of the team are performing to their best of their ability. There's a reason for that. So what we'll do, we'll move on from that. So there are little things you can do and think about. Uh, we're going to move on towards uh, what you can do uh, during a session or a race. Okay. So when we look at uh, a race, uh, especially now with all the tyre requirements, etc., it's good to read up on the race before you go into it, or you know, at least watch somebody's video on demand if you can. Well, unfortunately, if you Oceanians, you can't watch a video because you're literally the first ones to try it out. But if you start to understand the strategies of what people are doing, how long a tyre lasts, um, you know, are people pitting on lap five or six or seven? Uh, are people fuel saving, not fuel saving? It helps you prepare for a race. And again, I'm talking about this constantly. It's another worry gone. So you can say, well, okay, I'm going to do this strategy. You're not doing a me where you're literally qualifying. Now, I qualified on pole yesterday, for example. In fact, I'll put some foot charge in a second. I qualified on pole. I had no idea of the strategy because I've done zero practice. So I'm like panicking because I don't know the strategy. What tyre do I start on? What do I do? What is everyone else doing? Is it a fuel saving race? Uh, I mean, I'll put the clip on now. Jonas, how, Jonas, how am I pole? I don't know. I don't. <laughs> what do I do? I don't even know what I'm doing in the race. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm going to start on sauce, and then go from there. Uh, Jamas is taking mediums. Oh, okay. Uh, is this a flat out race or do I have to fuel save? I don't actually know. Oh my word. This is annoying. How am I on pole? I don't get it. What's going on? <laughs> I, don't even, I don't even understand. <laughs> oh, maybe I should have practiced a lot more for this. I don't know. So it's a fuel saving race and people are three stopping. So as you saw there, I was uh, panicking like crazy, and yeah, effectively, I didn't win the race. I came P2 in the end. I probably should have won that race, to be fair. Uh, I was out on my own for most of it, in clean air. I probably should have won. I didn't, because I didn't prepare myself well enough. Um, I think I did the best of my ability at the time, with the knowledge I had, but if I mentally prepared better, knew the strategies, you know, prepared in general... I would have done a lot better. Rather than panicking, the panicking leads to mistakes. Uh, you know, first couple of laps, mistakes. I didn't pull away as much as I should have. So, um, yeah, it is a problem. It's something that you should definitely look at. What you could do, and we've had this this season, because there's a lot of combos that I've repeated from last season, is actually look at uh, previous combos and identify, um, identify what was used then in terms of strategy, uh, and then look at a different way to race. Is it still the strongest strategy? But quickly, you can go, okay, that's a worry gone out of my mind straight away. I've already raced, raced that race. Let's have a look at the strategy quickly. Okay, that was the best. Boom. Worry gone. Notice I'm always talking about worries here. I'm trying to... We're mental preparation. I'm trying to get rid of all the worries. So I'm, I'm as strong as possible mentally to get into that race and do the best that I can. It's all about getting rid of those worries. And when you get rid of the worries, positivity goes up. Confidence goes up. It's, it's very straightforward. Um, so Laguna Seca Group 4 was a perfect example of this where... Uh, we've had it twice now. There was a slight different bot change. So was it necessarily the same strategy? It was very close. Um, so you can go back and look at those. Uh, and in the daily uh, race guides as well, I try and do that. So obviously I've raced a lot of the tracks already. So I try and help you guys prepare by saying, uh, for example, on Willow Springs, stay on the inside. You saw everyone go to the outside. Stay on the inside uh, and you should be able to get a better line. I mean, I'll show that now in case you haven't seen the daily guide. The last corner here, you always want to stay tight. I found it very unusual on this first lap that everybody went to the left here. You do not want to do that. And as you'll see in a second, the Frenchman's going to get it all sorts of wrong because he panics under braking. And I have to slam on there as well to avoid him. And you can see another person's gone off there to Narnia. Literally stay tight. That way you will not get sent to Narnia. So as you can see there, you know, stay on the inside. You uh, have a better line. And th th that way it hopefully takes away a worry from you because now you know, stay on the inside and you'll survive be on the outside and you might not survive. So again, a worry gone, less distractions. And I talked about distractions earlier on as well. Now, a, a good one actually is knowing your opponents. And I realize when you go into the lower uh, DR split, it's harder to then get matched up with the same people constantly. But you still come across the same people every now and then. So in top split, I see the same people all the time, of course. So I, you get to know your opponents and you'll quite often hear me say, I don't want to slipstream that person because I don't know them. I mean, no offense to that individual, but if I don't know them, I don't know their driving style, are they likely to make a mistake in qualifying, not likely to make a mistake? Um, are they the best person to follow? 
Are they not as quick as myself? So potentially um, I'm going to just catch up to them and my quality is going to be ruined. Are they much quicker than me and therefore I'm not going to keep up and therefore my qualifying is ruined as well? That sort of stuff is really good. Again, it takes worries out of there. So, you know, analyze your, your lobby initially when you get in and go, okay, I want to follow this driver or this driver or this driver. It's good if you're in a team, for example. Obviously, me and Jomas follow each other quite a lot in qualifying. Uh, and we can race each other very well because we understand each other. We can go out there and we have confidence that the other one will leave space. Uh, we can have slipstream trains. One person will get out of the way if needs to. We're not going to overly fight anywhere. Again, worries straight out of here, gone. Getting rid of all these worries. It's all about what it's all about here in terms of mental preparation. Um, so uh, I'll show you an example actually of me trying to find a slipstream partner. And you'll hear me talk about saying, I don't want to follow you. I don't want to follow you. I don't want to follow you. I'll follow you. I wouldn't mind overtaking these folks, getting to where Medi is. I don't, I don't know RK and Sami was involved in all those accidents. Yeah, exactly. Um, I don't. I have to follow somebody. That's the annoying part. I have to follow somebody. One good thing to do is actually have multiple strategies ready and available for you to use. So, um, I mean, I'm going to start looking at doing strategies for manufacturers and potentially nations as well, I'm not too sure about that. But essentially, if you have multiple strategies ready, uh, especially if you have a uh, qualifying session beforehand, so if you have a good qualifying session, you might go, okay, I'm going to do this strategy. If I have a bad qualifying, you go, okay, well, I've had a bad qualifying. It's not the end of the world. I'll do this strategy instead. That's a worry completely gone because, you know, if you just prepare for the good, then when you have something bad happen, so say you have a bad qualifying, what on earth do you do then? You just go, oh, well, it, it's, it's game over. Like literally, what what do I do? I, I'm ruined. But if you have multiple strategies ready, you can go, okay, I can do this, I can do that. Now, Giuseppe did amazing. And I mentioned this in that, that video, actually. It's called the Top Secret video. Uh, but basically, uh, Giuseppe had obviously planned something, or maybe decided on the fly, but knew this, the, how the cars were going to work. Uh, and he managed to undercut quite a lot of drivers and then gain positions that way in the Top 16 Superstar race. I'll show you a little clip of that now where he undercuts me. Oi! Ole! Oh, you're going for a really weird strategy, you, mate. What are you doing? Oh, I see what you're doing. Oh, I see what you're doing. So, I saw Giuseppe go into the pits there, and I instantly knew, after realising, he's going for the undercut, and the undercut is probably going to work here. But we had to find out whether it was going to work, because we're all sucking dirty air. Every single car is 1.5 seconds behind the next. It's kind of annoying, really, because you're basically deciding your position based on dirty air. Very frustrating, but let's see if Shuzetti's worked. I wish, Sledger, I wish. Oh, it worked, you cheeky devil. And you can see that because he had a bad qualifying, he still made the most of it and actually progressed through the field, which is good. Whereas I didn't because I wasn't as prepared. I didn't have multiple strategies ready. I'd hardly practiced, to be fair. So obviously that's then a worry for me because I started in a bad place. Whereas for him, it was actually better for him. Now... Um, one thing to note, actually, with all of this, um, I've got my list here, obviously, and I've written down something very, very, very key here. Um, and I've talked about it already with preparing stuff. And I want to really explain this example. 2018 Nürburgring World Tour event. Okay, that was the first ever World Tour event that happened in Gran Turismo Sport. Versus my Sydney World Tour in 2020. Now, in 2018, that Nürburgring event, I put more focus on making sure I had a video scheduled for every day while I was awake, because I was also going on holiday straight after that, uh, for YouTube. And I put in pretty much zero practice for that event. Zero practice. I didn't do any combos. We didn't know the combos, to be fair, but I didn't do any combos. I didn't try or anything like that. So I got to the event, and I was actually really worried about my performance. Now, the worry there is that rather than chucking worries away, like I've been saying, they were coming back at me, which then becomes a problem. So in that event, I didn't perform to my best of my ability. And in the end, I actually did okay, to be fair, with what I had, but I could have done a lot better. When it, whereas in Sydney, I knew exactly how to prepare. I prepared, I did the laps. Uh, so when I got to the event, I was confident in my ability to perform well, and I did the best that I could, to be fair. I 
figured I did very well. So in that situation, that's about, you know, making sure you don't have the worry on and taking any worries away from you. I know it's the same sentence, but basically I'm just trying to make sure you take all the worries away from you. Try and remove as much of the worry as possible so you have the confidence and positivity to go forward. Finally, uh, and this is this is so critical, do not put pressure on yourself, okay? Uh, and I recently did this myself, and I'll play an example in a second where I did this. But if you put pressure on yourself for a race, okay, and you don't get the result you want, so let's just say I have to win a race, and I'm, I'm, I get sixth in qualifying or tenth in qualifying, suddenly I'm like, oh, well, I'm, I'm frustrated now. I should be winning this race. Why am I not winning this race? Uh, I have the OP car or whatever it might be. That pressure is going to turn to frustration very, very quickly. Now, if you're frustrated in a race, you're going to perform badly because you're going to make more aggressive moves. Uh, you're going to make mistakes. Uh, you're going to be being very aggressive into corners and trying to cut the track. And you're going to get penalties, which is then going to further increase that frustration because you get a penalty. You're then even more frustrated. And then it really becomes kind of a toxic race. And you don't want that. So try and reduce the amount of pressure you put on yourself. Remember, when you go into a race, irrespective of who is there, okay? I don't care if Lightning's in there or whoever might be in there. You are in that race. You've been match made into that race. Therefore, you're driving with drivers of your skill level or you should be in that race. So enjoy it. Have fun with it. Don't put pressure on yourself. If you have a bad result, you have a bad result. It is what it is. You can't win every race. But you can certainly lose races by putting pressure on yourself and feeling frustrated. That is what you really can do. Now, I know I've sort of talked a lot there and I've shown you just brief examples. But really do think about the mental preparation. That's what this video is all about. Mental preparation. Making sure that you can get rid of all the worries, all the distractions, everything like that. And making sure you are as positive and confident as possible. And really go out and enjoy the races. Because if you enjoy them, you'll have fun and you will perform better. And that is it. That's mental preparation for you. I hope you enjoyed this sort of insightful video, hopefully. Um, obviously, not everybody will use this video for mental preparation. It's just here for those that want to do it. Um, I've explained it in a tournament environment. I've just explained it just in general as well. If you want to change anything or do anything to try and help, uh, hopefully improve your races. But that's going to be it for me now in terms of this episode. The next episode is all about equipment. Uh, which is kind of a, a big topic because obviously pad versus wheel is obviously going to be on the agenda there. Uh, so do make sure you tune in for that. But well, that's going to be it for me now, folks. Thanks very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.